first president of the Supreme Court has called on the government to release older prisoners from jails. In a damning critique of the UK justice system, Lord Phillips of Worth, Matravers, says offenders are locked up for too long and treated like animals. I think we lock people up for far too long. If you read any report on conditions in prison, they're always highly critical. Yeah. I mean, if I were Prime Minister, I would, and it would be politically unacceptable. Query saying we really need to give an amnesty and sweep out of the prison a lot of old men, and they are men, who are clogging up the prison, living there, um, you know, at, at enormous cost, securing them when they could be living in society quietly at their own expense. Well, as well as condemning current sentencing policy, Lord Phillips criticised the system's failure to rehabilitate offenders. The latest figures show there were 87,000 prisoners in England and Wales at the end of last year, up by roughly 5,000 from the year before. Uh, when he, he was talking about older people, and it, it was interesting, I was, I was reading quite a lot about this, and, and they're saying that it's essentially it's taken people by surprise how many older people there are in mm. jails, mostly men. And when they say older, they mean pretty much over 65. And then you look into the figures, 44% of those over 50 are in for sex offences, and almost all of those who are over eight in their, in their 80s were sentenced in their 70s. Now, part of this is to do, of course, with historic sex offences. So, of course, they're being <clears throat> sentenced a little bit later. Almost a fifth of older people have a degree. So I suppose that's, you don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But, of course, the bad thing is the fact that they've got complex health needs which of course costs loads to actually sort out because they've got all these They probably get these better issues. healthcare in prison than they do. Yeah, yeah shorter way in this. I'll see the doctor faster. Yeah, yeah. But there is, <laughs> but there is a, 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 perhaps a, a point here where you go, well, should they therefore be sentenced not to jails but to care homes with secure facilities? I don't know. Is there a, is there a different way? You know, I think we definitely need some um, reform of our prison system yeah. and uh, it's, it's clearly not working. Uh, however, when people complain and say they're treated like animals, I quite like that, actually. If you're, if you're in there for a proper crime, sex offences, that kind of thing, I quite like you to, I'd like you to be treated like an animal for... If for you're really while. old and you're still in prison, I'd like to think that there's a good reason for that, is that you did something in the past. I don't want to suddenly let out loads of old people and then you see someone did a terrible crime on a Viking river cruise. This is like... <laughs> you're not talking about, like, really good guys that deserve... <laughs> deserve a break here. I mean, if you talk about the intergenerational unfairness, how unfair is it? Uh, old people have got a lot more of the wealth. And, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I didn't realise it was your 70th. <laughs> off, off, off you go. The whole point about being in prison is you lose your liberty. That's the, the single most important thing yeah. about yeah, being in prison. Yeah, but we don't prison. always get it right, do we? No, well, we if, don't. You want, if you want to have a review of whether certain, like, uh, historical sentencing is out of step with our modern time, that's a separate... No, that, uh, but a blanket kind of sort of almost pardon for older offenders doesn't work for me. Yeah. No, I, think no, it... I get that, but I mean, there are some, some people who are so infirm that they are patently not a risk to anybody. So I could see... But it's not There's about risk, always... they should lose their liberty. They committed a crime, they were sentenced, you do the, yeah, you do the crime. Yeah, and of course it depends on the case, doesn't it? I mean, there's, you know, the, at the most extreme end, and not generally in this country, is the, these ancient people who are prosecuted for crimes in the, in the Nazi regime. And that always, like, on a very human level, to see these doddery old guys are literally, like, in their 90s or whatever, sent off to jail is quite weird. But, of course, of course that has to happen. Yeah. So, I think I can understand why yeah. people feel quite conflicted about this. I, I think whether or not it's releasing older people um, or whether it's, which would be, you know, where I would go, making sure that if, you know, if it's a low-level crime, we don't fill our prisons with those people. There, but something does have to be done mm. about the fact that our prisons are so overcrowded. And you cannot rehabilitate somebody if you send them to be locked up 23 hours a day. It's simply impossible. Yeah. And, yes, I totally take your point, Jeff, <clears throat> about prison isn't just about rehabilitation, it's about locking people up but if you do have this revolving door and you take you know sort of soft criminals and turn them into hardened criminals there will be more victims not fewer victims because they yeah. will come out and commit more crime and society will be worse we've got the highest imprisonment rates in western europe which I think is crazy. And our prison population has gone up 80% in 30 years. Yeah. And, and this is because government after government says, I will, we will mm. lock people up more than the opposition yeah. will, without thinking it through and thinking, well, is it It's also because we fail to deport foreign prisoners. There's despite that's, continually yep, saying we do. It's about 10% yep, yep. of the prison population. And yeah. people would be astonished how much it costs to, to keep someone in prison. I mean, mm. it's 
well more than it costs to send a child yes, to Eton. Yes, about 50 grand. 50, mm. About 59 yeah. in Belmarsh. Yeah. I was looking at this yesterday. Wow. And, of course, there are a number of people who've been in jail, like we know from the post office uh, scandal. Uh, who were in, Who in jail who shouldn't have Absolutely. been there in the first place. And, therefore, actually, it does behave us to and actually, as a civilised are... society, look after prisoners. But another thing is a number of people who are in there on remand waiting for trials that never seem to happen. Yeah, that's I mean, an extreme case, Julian Assange has been in prison for five years in Belmarsh, he's still not actually been convicted of anything. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, on, not... on remand, there's 15,500 people you know, in, in prison uh, waiting for a trial. It used to be one out of every nine prisoners was waiting for a trial on remand. Mm. It's now one out of every five. Yeah. That, that, that's completely mad. So, so I think all of those issues, you know, prison should be for violent people or you know, people yeah. who yeah. put society at risk. And the other people, let's deal with them in a different way. Different. I'm quite lefty on this. I think that there's a you real, are. yeah, there's a you real are. problem with it though. There's no point, particularly a lot of women who've got addiction problems and so on. Yeah. There's no point in this revolving door of continually sending people with profound mental health and dysfunctional lifestyle style problems back and forth to jail. Yeah. We need to find another way of dealing. And also, with it. one percent of the population were in care homes. And, and the prison population, it's something like 60% mm. of prisoners yeah. were in a care home yeah. as a child. So that tells another story, yeah. you know, that the, these, these kids... easier to adopt. How about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>